Paintings start with a blank canvas, and today I'm going to show you how to make the frames and stretch the canvas over them. And I'm going to show it to you in a variety of different ways. So let's get to it. We are going to make simple frames out of pine, fancy ones with a thin profile along the edge, cost-effective options made out of plywood, and of course, we'll show you how to stretch the canvas over them. Let's start with simple though. I'm using 3 quarter inch thick by one and a half inch wide select pine. After measuring and marking the length, I cut the pieces with my circular saw guided by my Craig portable crosscut. The crosscut just helps me ensure that my cuts are nicely perpendicular. I'm using the Craig 310 pocket hole jig here. What's nice about this system is that you don't need to cut precise 45 degree miters to make these frames. You just clamp down the jig and use the drill bit that comes with it to drill a pair of low angled holes that will allow you to connect the pieces at the corner. If you're a serious painter and you need to make a lot of frames really fast, I recommend the Craig 720 Pro Jig. It just automatically clamps them down with a lever and you can quickly produce a whole bunch of frames. I'm using one of the Craig long necked clamps to clamp the pieces down so that I can drive in the screws. For stretchers smaller than 2.5 feet by 2.5 feet, these pocket hole screws provide enough structural support. But if you want to go any bigger than that, there are a lot of easy ways to reinforce the corners. The simplest method is just to screw in some L brackets on the inside corners. With my corners reinforced, I'm now ready to stretch the canvas. I lay it out and cut it with about four to six inches extending past the frame itself. I'm using a staple gun with three eighths inch long staples to staple the canvas to the back side of the frame. I start by stapling about a six inch wide strip in the middle, and then I take these special pliers, link in the description, pull the canvas tight, and then staple the other side. I work in a cruciform pattern doing these six to eight inch wide strips in the center before moving to the left and right and working my way closer to the corners. The back side of these pliers is a little bit curved so you can really wrench and lever the canvas nice and tight. I recommend having a hammer nearby though to drive the staples all the way in. For the corners, I just use the pliers to pull it nice and tight and staple all the way up to the corner before folding the canvas over so that none shows from the front and stapling down the excess. It takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to do a 30 inch square canvas like this, which makes this whole process an easy and cost effective alternative to buying pre-stretched canvases. For larger and stronger frames, you can use 3 quarter inch thick by 2 and a half inch wide select pine, but for some painters, they don't want that thick frame showing through the canvas. So for this large four foot by four foot canvas, we're gonna add a perimeter thin edge and experiment reinforcing the corners with low cost plywood triangles. Select pine doesn't have knots in it. You can save money by going with knotty pine, but if you get a knot in an inopportune location, you could have a very weak stretcher. Quarter inch or half inch thick plywood can be used to make corner reinforcements. Although I typically only like to use this method if I'm doing a perimeter thin edge. I'm using my Craig straight edge guide to cut the plywood into rectangles that I can then cut into triangles. I then screw down these half inch thick triangles to the back corners which will provide a whole lot of strength. Plywood is a more cost effective alternative than using metal brackets, but as you can see, it does add some thickness to the back corners, which can add some complications when stretching the canvas. That's why I like to add a perimeter edge of three quarter inch by one and a half inch thick pine. Not only does this add a little bit of extra strength, it means that only three quarters of wood will show through the canvas. And at the same time, it gives me an even consistent back edge for pulling the canvas around. I'm just screwing these on with one and a half inch long finish screws. Select Pine is great, but if you want to save even more money, you can even use three quarter inch thick furniture grade plywood. I just used my straight edge guide to cut a piece to length. Then I used it to cut one and a half to two inch wide strips that I'll use to make the stretchers. Typically plywood is a little bit heavier, but also a little stronger than Select Pine. And if you get it in four foot by eight foot sheets, and break it all down into strips to make stretchers, you have the most cost-effective way of making canvases that I have discovered. Stretchers made out of a good furniture grade plywood will also be a little straighter and truer than ones made out of pine trim.
I'm not a fine artist, so uh, do your own research as to the type of canvas you want to use. I know that some canvases come pre-gessoed, which means they already have a coating on them. Some of the artists that I work with, they really like a raw canvas, which is what I showed here. And that's because they're using more of a water-based paint and they want to spread throughout the natural fibers. One of the things I really like about this project isn't to use them for paintings at all. I think this is a great way to make acoustical panels. So if you're in a room, you're doing those Zoom calls where it's a little too echoey, some canvas or any fabric stretched over a wood frame will absorb a little more sound than just drywall wood alone. So it's a really cool technique, it's low cost, and uh, give it a try. All right, thanks, bye.